This segment is brought to you courtesy of Caribbean American Weekly, a newspaper owned and operated by Caribbean Americans. Read the latest edition at www.cawnyc.com. That's www.cawnyc.com. To like us on Facebook, to advertise or to subscribe, visit us at www.cawnyc.com. That's www.cawnyc.com. To advertise with the Caribbean American Weekly Publication for freelance assignments to distribute at your business place, visit us at www.cawnyc.com. That's www.cawnyc.com. Or to meet a marketing representative at our office, call 718-771-0988. That's 718-771-0988. A very warm welcome to everyone. My name is Paul Phillip, Editor-in-Chief of Caribbean American Weekly, Workers World Today, and the Immigrants Journal. And we have the honor of chatting with Mr. Manuel Castro, who is the Commissioner in the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs. Welcome, sir. So good to have you here with us. Thank you so much for having me on. A pleasure. So, you have a very remarkable story from dreamer to commissioner. Let's talk about that. Yes, and uh, I'm very proud of my own journey as an immigrant to the United States and, and New York City. I crossed the Mexico-U.S. border when I was five years old with my mother. I grew up here in Brooklyn, New York, Sunset Park, Brooklyn, in Flatbush. I uh, grew up undocumented, uh, was a dreamer, was very active in the movement early, early on, uh, even before we were known as dreamers. I began uh, organizing with other similar young people who were wondering what would be of us uh, as undocumented. Um, eventually, I went to college and continued to, to organize with dreamers and with the broader immigrant rights movement. And, you know, now as commissioner, I'm very committed to using that experience to support those people that continue to come. Most people don't realize that New York City is one of the cities where you see highest numbers of newly arrived immigrants from all over the world. So, as we address the situation with dreamers or with immigrants who have been here uh, for some time, we continue to receive every immigrants. And so we have to be a welcoming city, regardless of whether you came here decades ago or just yesterday. And that's my commitment. And I want to also use my personal story to inspire others to continue to fight on and continue to go to school, continue to build your career, regardless of the challenges in front of you. Because as the mayor often says, the American dream is really possible, especially here in New York City. And we want to make sure the city is the city of immigrants and is the city of the American dream. And you are living proof of that. I am. I'm, I'm very proud of it. The Office of Immigrant Affairs has different services that they provide for immigrants. Can you talk about those services? Yeah, and one of the most important focuses of, of our office is to ensure that all government services are available for immigrant communities. So while we do provide a number of services at our office, uh, particularly around uh, immigration legal services, our municipal ID, our We Speak program, which is our ESL program, and others, it's important to know that Moya is an advocate, it's a champion for immigrants within sitting government. So our role is to ensure that all agencies have a strategy and approach to reaching immigrant communities wherever they live and in their languages. So we're an advocate internally. Uh, the mayor is very supportive of making sure this is not an English-only city, that we have all the languages that are spoken here available for our community members. So I work with fellow commissioners. I work with other city agencies to make sure that they are adhering to something called Local Law 30, which uh, ensures that all services provided by civic government are available in the preferred language of, of our community members, regardless of whether you speak English or not. If your preferred language is 
the Spanish, Creole, or, or whatever it might be, that's the language that should be available. If you come across any issues, you can call our office and we help people navigate uh, the city services, or you can call 311 and make sure you make a, let's say a complaint or friendly suggestion. That report comes to me and I make sure that agencies are following local law 30 and there are other laws that are meant to protect the privacy of immigrants. So regardless of your immigration status, you should be able to reach out to us and receive the support that you need in our city government. And talking about immigration status, one of the main concerns of immigrants is immigration fraud. The previous administration had draconian laws which immigrants are still feeling the effects of today. What is your office, the Office of Immigrant Affairs, doing to protect and inform immigrants about immigration fraud? Yes, there are a number of laws in place, both at the state, city, and federal level, that protect immigrants from immigration services fraud. It is, however, very common in New York City, well, in, across the country, and so we want to make sure to find those bad actors as soon as possible. So if a person has uh, some suspicion that perhaps they, they are not being serviced by an immigration lawyer or they are being serviced by someone that just doesn't seem to know what they're doing, or for whatever suspicion you have, you're welcome to call our office, our hotline, to get a consultation. We support connecting people with the appropriate authorities to look into the matter. But uh, education is key. Education about, you know, what to look for in immigration services fraud. I say it a lot when I, you know, when I'm in the community, often in our home countries, we think of notaries or notarios as uh, people that can practice immigration law or law. Here, you can't. You have to be a licensed lawyer. And there are many things that you need to adhere to as a lawyer. And, you know, we're happy to support anyone if they think they are in the middle of a scam or they have any suspicions you are welcome to call our hotline. This is why we set up a hotline and I'll provide that number. Our hotline is 212-788-7654. Again, that's 212-788-7654. And again, call us if you have any challenges accessing services within sitting government. We're happy to help navigate. We're happy to submit any complaints. If, for instance, you go and ask for a city service and you're denied because of your immigration status, that is something that we are in charge of making sure does not happen. Because in New York City, regardless of your immigration status, you have access to all our city government services. There are a number of services uh, that because we need to look at, uh, you know, we need to partner with federal government that have limitations, but most services that people will want to connect to, uh, you should be able to access without regard of your immigration status. You have any issues, call us. And if you feel like you have not received an appropriate service from an immigration lawyer, or you feel like you have been part of a scam, call us and we'll connect you to the appropriate authorities. Excellent. So you mentioned education, and I know of your We Speak program. Mm -hmm. How is that going? So We Speak is actually a very innovative program for English language learners. And you can enroll, you can visit our website, you can enroll, it's a virtual program. We work with volunteers who we train to provide English language classes uh, virtually using a series of videos that we produced that are also meant to educate people about city services and other civic engagement matters. And so while the person is learning English, they're also learning about city services, which is wonderful. Kind of like, welcome to New York, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, excellent. So we all saw how immigrant workers were essential in the pandemic. And truth be told, immigrants have always been essential workers. One of the concerns of immigrants is health care. Health care currently has become an emergency and not preventative care. What sort of health care services are provided for immigrants regardless of their immigration status? So there are two things I'd like to say here. The first on workers' rights. So regardless of your immigration status, your workers' rights need to be respected. We have a Department of 
it's called Department of Consumer Affairs and Worker Protection. If you think your rights as a worker have been violated, again, you can call our hotline. We can put you in touch with with that department so that you have uh, you have the support that you need to submit a complaint and, and have guidance as to what to do if you feel like your rights as a worker have been have not been respected. There's also the Human Rights Commission that also addresses workplace issues. Again, you can call our hotline. It's available for immigrants to learn more about their rights, uh, but also a bridge to these different departments and agencies that can support further. On the healthcare issues, we have a great program called NYC Cares. Uh, in its program meant really designed with immigrants in mind. And so it's a program that you can enroll regardless of your immigration status. And it functions similar to a health insurance program, but it's not a health insurance. It's rather a program within our health and hospital system that will pair you with a doctor, set you up with preventative care, and how, and most importantly, build a relationship with a health provider in, here in the city. And again, it's regardless of your immigration status and the services provided in the language of your preference. And so it's a great program. We just crossed the 100,000th uh, registered, and we're heading quickly to 200,000. And we're going to celebrate the anniversary. Dr. Jimenez, who is the director of the program, is is someone that we work with closely, and in our office is is really a bridge to that program as well. And I have an announcement to make because, again, as I said. New York City is a place where immigrants continue to come, and we're proud of that. We're proud that immigrants are probably arriving as we speak. We want to make sure all these city services are available to them. So we have eliminated, there was a six-month waiting period to access this NYC CARES program. We've eliminated that. So as soon as you arrive in New York City, you're eligible for this program. And so whether you're coming from you from the Ukrainian region, fleeing from, you know that vi- violence, or Central America or the Caribbean, now you can go to the hospital and make sure you get the support you need there. That's absolutely great news. Let's look at ICE. ICE has been terrorizing immigrants appearing in courts. We know that the district attorney in Brooklyn and the state attorney general has sued ICE to prevent them from approaching immigrants in court. Regarding immigrants' rights, what it is that they need to know if ICE approaches them at their home, workplace, or in public? Yes, again, you know, uh, our state and city legislature is working hard to ensure that uh, immigrants are protected uh, from uh, ICE enforcement because, you know, ICE enforcement can have a chilling effect in the community that, you know, drives people further underground in the shadows and fearful of accessing critical services or even emergency services. So we do not want ICE to be associated with any city or government, local government program or uh, agency. It's really important for us to make that distinction. Unfortunately, for immigrant communities, that's hard to make, you know, and so I know our state and city legislature have been working hard for years and still are to make sure there are protections in place, laws in place that uh, prevent, uh, you know, immigration enforcement ICE from, you know, being in our neighborhoods because, again, it can have a chilling effect. If a person comes across immigration enforcement or ICE or any other agency, they have rights. They have city government to support. The city government provides about 60 something million dollars in legal support to immigrant communities. And so they can reach out to us and we can provide some consultation, right, as to what to do. And I want to provide a hotline that has been created specifically for this. And the number is 800 354-0365. Again, it's 800-354-0365. Again, if you come across ICE or an agency or, you know, you get questioned and you have, if you have any uh, concerns, whether you or your family or neighbors, call this hotline and we'll be able to provide you with consultation as to what to do next. Great. June is Immigrants Month. 
What is the Office of Immigrant Affairs planning? Oh, not just uh, the Office of Immigrant Affairs. This is a, a citywide party, right? Uh, we want to uplift and celebrate our not just our legacy as the city of immigrants, but our current status as the city of immigrants. So we're going to be celebrating. Uh, just this week, I was at the Seaport, South Street Seaport Museum, celebrating a rich a history of immigration, but soon we'll be out in the parks, we'll be out in, you know, our neighborhoods celebrating our current community uh, in our current immigrant neighborhoods. Uh, so look look for a calendar of events, which will be published soon on our website and social media. Please follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, and there's so many different things that we're going to be doing. It is important to know that it's not just our office, but it's all city government agencies that are celebrating. So whether it's the health department, education, and our nonprofit providers, it's important to encourage especially young people to embrace their cultural heritage, their experiences as children of immigrants or as immigrants themselves. So that's why we want to do this. We're working on a, a number of projects, including a really great Broadway play that I have joined a couple of times. We want to bring that to a, a park in an immigrant community so that they get to have that experience and also see themselves, right, in a performance. And yes, please follow us. First, check our website, nyc.gov slash immigrants. You'll have a full calendar of events there. And on social media, just search NYC immigrants and we'll pop up. Commissioner Castro, we know your remarkable story. We know that New York is a city of immigrants. What is your message of hope and inspiration to all immigrants, regardless of their immigration status? Well, I I just spoke at CUNY, at an event at CUNY, where we were celebrating dreamers who had received a scholarship. And Dreamers and documented youth that are now at CUNY studying to be, you know, any everything from nurses, lawyers, educators. I said to them, embrace your story, you know, share your story with others, really own that story. I certainly did, and it's compelling, right? We all come from different parts of the world. People want to know about us. People want to celebrate us because I think most people, there is a few who don't, but most people know that our parents chose to leave or we chose to leave our countries for a better future. And they want to celebrate our cultures, our work ethic, and that spirit that drives us every day. So I encourage everyone to celebrate your, your cultural background. Join the parades. Join the celebrations. We want to make sure this is not just a city of immigrants, but a country of immigrants. And that's how we're going to push back on, you know, hate speech and anti-immigrants and, and so on. So the more people participate, the better. And you'll see me at a parade. You'll see me out in the streets, in the neighborhoods. That's my commitment to you. I want to uplift this as a city of immigrants. So we are going to make New York a shining example. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Commissioner Castro. It was such a pleasure, such an honor to speak with you today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. This segment was brought to you courtesy of Caribbean American Weekly, a newspaper owned and operated by Caribbean Americans. Read the latest edition at www.cawnyc.com. That's www.cawnyc.com. To like us on Facebook, to advertise or to subscribe, visit us at www.cawnyc.com. That's www.cawnyc.com. To advertise with the Caribbean American Weekly publication for freelance assignments to distribute at your business place, visit us at www.cawnyc.com. That's www.cawnyc.com. Or to meet a marketing representative at our office, call 718-771-0988. That's 718-771-0988.